the modern-day institution, man's way of organizing belief systems into their different clans, cult-like attitudes, often driven by an existential perception, specialisms of some form or merely a naturally occurring passion. They are either built around a certain series of events or an apparent fact or claim, which stand as the cornerstones of said institution. It is therefore within the profiteers of said ideology's interests to not only suppress any evidence that may surface that would make their treasured institutions crumble to their very core foundation, but to actively destroy said relics whenever one gets an opportunity to do so. The Bamian Buddha, for example, Apparently, this monstrous carving, perfectly bored into a sheer rock face in the Bamian Valley of central Afghanistan, is not only a relic, which we hypothesize, was left by a now lost civilization, but due to the facial features once masterfully depicted upon the statue, removed at some later time within history, carved flat, not only making its identification as Buddha questionable, it was for some reason completely destroyed during the Iraq War. Its destruction, I propose, supports our prior posit of it indeed being that of a lost civilization's work, this being the sole motive for such actions. Interestingly, hidden voids found behind the carving. If it were indeed a solid carving, as one would have once presumed when gazing upon it, how were these hollow chambers once placed behind said carving? Additionally, not only do most modern institutions deny any of the evidence we so often put forward on our channel, often in regards to a past law civilization, but fields such as geology is simply actively writing off countless ancient sites and anomalies as simply geological coincidences, their existence being an impossibility according to already established, supposedly concluded chronology for human civilization. One reoccurring strategy, which I like to call the pareidolia effect denial, has befallen countless sites of interest. One of the most hotly debated being the face on Mars, now simply dismissed as a trick of light, the intriguing pyramidal features nearby, which also somehow align with Pleiades. This denial strategy has condemned other said features here on Earth, some of which found in remote places that, according to modern academia, have simply never been inhabited. Thus, regardless of the artificial nature of such places as Gornia Shoria, must be dismissed as mere coincidental geological features. The ruins clearly immense age, often used, in an unfortunate twist of fate, as support of such claims, as nature eventually reclaims all. Thus, the older the ruin, the easier this said denial strategy is to argue. That is, until now, in a modern era, where modern technology now allows us to collect a massive amount of information on simply anything, unexplained features, parts, and many other advanced unexplained legacies of an antiquity, once hidden, now shared far and wide, evidence which flies in the face of modern paradigm. The Sharanian is yet another of these curious, clearly immensely old anomalies that regardless of its form, once being carved from extremely tough rock, maybe this is why our lost ancestors built with such enormous stones, and did so in an as yet unexplained, yet clearly highly advanced way, known as polygonal masonry. Perhaps they built like this so that their footprint here on our planet be long-lived, designed to deliberately be resistant to the elements, to reach us now in the modern day giving all of us an opportunity to understand the real history of our Earth, regardless of what others would like. We find all of these things highly compelling. Osaka Castle is one of the most intriguing of all of Japan's forgotten wonders, a place we have covered in the past. It was, we believe, like so many other inexplicable sites around the world, re-inhabited by our most recent of ancestors, placed within an academically permitted timeline of events. A chronology that, if one wishes to succeed in the mainstream, must toe the line of. For if one goes against the grain and explores the site with a critical mind, one can clearly see it contains a number of surviving features, which not only displays lost knowledge, 
thus the work of a lost civilization, which at some point in the very distant past built ruins all around the globe. Building countless polygonal ruins which have, due to their incredible construction technique, fortunately survived into the modern era. However, it is not just its polygonal foundations which show clear evidence of these elusive and consistently denied lost ancestors. Octopus Rock, for example, also sometimes known as the Drum Stone, is the largest megalithic stone found within the walls within the castle's grounds. This giant stone, just like those of Baalbek, is enormous. Estimates for its weight range from 100 to 300 tons, although it could, of course, be far heavier. However, even at these conservative estimates, any explanation of how ancient man accomplished such feats remains elusive. For the fact remains, the stone is of an incredible size, and to this day its placement, along with many others found throughout the world, remains unexplained and unknown. So for one to conclude that this stone's use, its quarrying, transporting, and placement within this wall, was done by our less capable, more primitive post-Ice Age ancestors, yet all these methods of building and lifting, the knowledge of how to do such tasks, somehow simply vanished through the ages. All of which now remaining a mystery even with computer technology an explanation still evades us, thus to conclude this to be anything else than that of a relic, left by a far older, now lost civilization's work, we believe would be highly illogical, and should appear illogical to anyone with a capacity to dissect the purposes for these actions, taken by an academia claiming to hold all the answers. All the while, actively concealing or ignoring any conflicting controversial evidence truths that due to their belief in their power, laying within their reluctance to ever admit an incorrect hypothesis for the origins of species or the timeline of man, thus this doubling down on fallacy merely makes their persistence at sticking to said posits not only a damaging conspiracy, which robs us all of our heritage, but can also be perceived as an attempt to conceal anything which could alter the status quo. The octopus rock is an incredible feat of ancient engineering, and one, just like that of the polygonal masonry techniques, that can be found at countless other sites the world over, is clearly a relic of a forgotten past, accomplished with the use of forgotten technology and knowledge. Just how big is octopus rock? How old is it, for that matter? And how did our ancient ancestors accomplish these feats? As our research deepens and our studies widen, our target, that of a currently hidden lost civilization, becomes clearer in the mind every day, and it is only a matter of time before they are fully rediscovered. To deny such facts will eventually become too ludicrous. It is a journey of discovery which is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. As one would come to realize, while traversing such fields of research as we do, you will inevitably come face to face with a worthy adversary. That foe, of course, is modern paradigm. Often scoffed at when discussing the possible existence of a highly trained, highly secret group of worldwide individuals who are tasked with the protection of a profitable lie. Often labeled a conspiracy theorist due to the vast array of missing evidence and stolen relics. Yet, alas, regardless of this, we feel it is our duty to vindicate all those who have suffered for doing nothing more than tell the truth. Many thanks to Will Hart over at Nexus Magazine in Spain for his exhaustive research. Let's start with a familiar friend, the Great Sphinx. In 1993, NBC aired a show titled The Mysteries of the Sphinx. During the show, geological evidence was shown which indicated that the Sphinx was vastly older than Egyptologists currently claim. This evidence has subsequently become popularly known as the water erosion controversy. The self-taught Egyptologist John Anthony West first brought the evidence to the attention of geologist Dr. Robert Schock. Now, after thoroughly studying the Sphinx firsthand, numerous geologists share West's conclusions and many have announced their findings to the world. 
Dr. Zawi Hawass, along with the Egyptian antiquities, have launched a barrage of public criticism at this new evidence. Renowned Egyptologist Dr. Mark Lehner, who is regarded as the world's foremost expert on the Sphinx, also joined this attack, publicly declaring West and Shock as ignorant and insensitive. The smear campaign was ultimately a success and squashed any further exploration of the theory. This, regardless of the overwhelming evidence supporting their claims. And this intellectual mudslinging is unfortunately quite common. The case of author Michael Cremo could be seen as a well-documented example of this, and it also exposes just how the scientific establishment openly uses pressure tactics on the media and government to stifle historical truths. In Michael's book, Forbidden Archaeology, he examines many artifacts that prove modern man's antiquity far exceeds the age currently accepted by academia. In 1996, when NBC broadcasted a special program called The Mysterious Origins of Man, they covered material from Cremo's book. The reaction from the scientific community could be seen as verging on ridiculous. NBC was deluged with letters from furious scientists and others within certain fields who all called the producer a fraud and the whole program a hoax, even attempting to force NBC to not rebroadcast the popular program ever again. They went to the tremendous effort of presenting a case to the federal government, requesting that the Federal Communications Commission step in and bar NBC from airing the program again. This was not only an apparent infringement of free speech and a blatant attempt to thwart commerce, but up to that point, it was an unprecedented effort to censor intellectual discourse. Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre would also feel the cold hands of conspiracy. A geologist working for the U.S. Geological Survey, she was dispatched to an archaeological site in Mexico with the task of dating a group of artifacts. This particular case, again, perfectly illustrates just how far this elusive establishment is willing to go to guard orthodox tenants. McIntyre used state-of-the-art equipment to date the relics, but her results were off the charts. The lead archaeologist expected a date of 25,000 years or less, yet she found dates of 250,000 years or more on multiple occasions. A dating of 25,000 years is conveniently critical to the Bering Strait crossing theory. Once her results were realized, the head archaeologist decided to dispose of Steen McIntyre's results she has since found it hard to get her papers published, and she has also lost a teaching job at an American university. These sorts of scenarios from these particular types of people is what drives us to expose the truth. No one should lose their career because they are doing it correctly. Unfortunately, however, unless there is a dramatic shift within our own society, stories such as these are likely to continue. We have covered many strange artifacts upon our channel, many of them after in-depth examinations by the numerous leading skeptics of their time, challenging the rigidly protected views of antiquity, hinting at an extraordinarily longer history than currently taught. It must be noted that to classify as an upart, an object doesn't have to be of an unexplained nature. They can also be highly advanced pieces of technology dated far within our past, yet for some reason not seen again until very recently. Usually, these objects display advanced technological methods of creation that were not again realized until very recently. Our next artifact is an ancient clay disc. Discovered in 1908 within the palace of Phaistos Crete, a 4,000-year-old CD-ROM that we feel may soon be added to the list of Uparts. The Dropa discs, artifacts eerily similar to the tablet, are purported by some to have been left by a group of extraterrestrials known as the Dropa people, who apparently crashed within the Bayan Air Mountains some 12,000 years ago. This account translated from the discs in 1962. These 716 unexplained discs share the same advanced technique of recording information as our disk found in Crete, a method that many specialists, such as Gareth Owens of the Technological Educational Institute of Crete, are now calling an ancient CD-ROM. However, 
what we feel makes the stone tablet an official upart, just like the stones of Dropa, is the fact that the language used upon the disc is as yet undeciphered. And although the Dropa discs were apparently decoded in 1962, an agreement upon the accuracy of this translation has never been agreed upon. What could these mysterious symbols mean? Why are they placed, or rather stored, upon this particular circular stone tablet in such a peculiar, yet to us, technologically familiar format? Describing the artifact as an apparent Phaistos disc and the first Minoan CD-ROM, Gareth and other specialists have seemingly been struggling to explain the clearly unusual characteristics of the tablet, and indeed its possible origins. Predictably, Instead of mentioning any possibility that due to the disc's unknown language and clear antiquity that it could, perhaps, be a long-lost relic from a civilization as yet not understood, it has merely been placed within the very recent past, with an explanation of it being nothing more than a prayer disc to a mother. Experts admit that the tablet is very hard to explain, and they are struggling to come up with a definitive reading of the disc made up of 241 unknown tokens, engraved upon both sides, these now known to have been based off a 45-symbol alphabet. Who built this ancient disc in the design of a modern CD-ROM? Why can't we read the unusual language written upon it? Is it, as the academics claim, a mere 4,000 years old? Or is it, as we feel the evidence suggests, actually an extremely ancient upart.